was like, come on, bro, why? You, you're trying to be, be hyped, but you're so tired. 45 minutes set. <laughs> you're falling asleep, like, bro, it hurts. All right, anyways, Nico versus Kamehame. Yeah, you're right, winner's quarters. Bro. Like, like we're, we're approaching it, but I mean, each each pool was 64 men. But let's get into the real meat and potatoes here, because for sure it's Nico versus Kamehame. And last time we kind of saw this was back at the Mango uh, Doubles. He teamed up with S2H and against Kamehame and Sue. And he was able to pretty do, do pretty well against Kamehame and hold his own. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure uh, what to think of this match at all. You don't re you really only see a couple Warios coming into like any scene, that being like Gluttony and uh and Tweak. yeah Tweak. But so Kamehame does have a really good Warrior. I've been seeing him over these past few days at the Mango at MSM, and it's been putting in work, man. Yeah. He's been doing a tremendous amount of work. Not only that, but one thing that Kamehame kind of has is he's been maining Warrior a little bit on the side, even in Smash 4. Like, he kind of had, he had, he had like a secret Warrior that he didn't really go out every now and then. Yeah, you saw it in a couple tournaments, but like, honestly, in this game, now he's like a lot better. It's such a good time to pull it out. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you have to really respect about Wario too is like a pretty good aerial drift. That's why you see them go for retreating fair. They go for retreating fair, and if you fall forward, then they go ahead and just follow up. For Nico though, he's the one thing that he's been really good at getting against Kamehame is coming back from the ledge, and that's the one thing that like Wario really does suffer is being short and stubby. Not only that, like it's hard to fight a character with such a long hitbox. Yeah. In fact, that uh, yeah, Shulk's is gonna be able to just wall Wario out, but the problem is that he does have that bit of startup. And Wario is fast enough with the fair, with the nair, to actually just kind of contest it before it comes out. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I did like that Kamehameha like, understood, like, oh, these are really fast, I have the tech chase. But then Nico responded, he's like, all right, hold up, never mind on the tech chase. He Ghost goes for the- Ghost out of shield, I like it. The reason why is because he had bike there, and then would have extended the hitbox of it. And if Nico was caught off guard, he definitely would have lost stuff there. So Nico just knows, I have to keep the spacing. 79%, I mean, it's a pretty even game you know, for a couple conversions from Kamehameha, and you'll get it. Dash attack would have definitely thrown Nico off the stage. If, if not, if he had the sus DI, I would have killed him, but unfortunately for Kamehameha, he's the only one that's getting killed. Dropping that first stock. Only 94% on Nico. And the fact that uh, Kamehameha, he used that waft pretty early into the match, so he's going to get one, maybe two more if this match goes on. So I understand the idea to go for it out of shield. Yeah. He actually got the parry, missed the down tilt, but we still got the shoulder check on the dash attack. Two uh, clean stocks for both players. Forward throw, what's three? Goes for reverse snare. Uh, I'm not sure what you could have got off of that, honestly. Same. <laughs> I, was, I was counting on you. You're the one who hangs out with Nico. You know what's funny? Sometimes every now and then Nico will pull off on you that I'm like, yo, bro, I didn't see that on the screen. Where have you been hiding this? I, bro, it, Shulk's up new, like, things every day, and it's so exciting to see. Yeah. The one thing, though, that Kamehameha is, like, so initial respect is, like, I know that if I approach, he's going to go for retreating back air, being a pretty long hitbox, mm -hmm. or he goes for Nair, and then Nair will lead into a back air. So he has to kind of, like, watch his approach. But that's the one thing that Nico has over Kamehameha is, like, he he's able to whiff Kamehameha more than Kamehameha wants to whiff Nico. But now he kind of had him trapped on the ledge. Nico's done a lot of damage to Kamehameha. He hasn't got much chance to actually get damage, but... As I say, that up throw up air. And he immediately turns out the shield bar at that opportunity because he knows how the waft may be coming, even if it's a weak one, and then I'll just lose a lot of momentum and stock here, so I have to make sure I'm not going to lose anything. Oh, that was a pretty tough back end because that allowed Kamehameha to just go ahead and go over him. Oh, look for the bike, but I'm pretty sure we're still on the, the top platform of PS2. Yo, man, watch yourself on the ledge. You don't want to get Rick James. Slap yeah, him yeah, out of there. Yeah, he James. He's still good, though. Oh, so no. Nope. the other way, down yeah. her. Gonna have so much knockback, like horizontal knockback. It's such a crazy move. A B though, yeah, gonna get rid of him immediately. The DI was not looking too good. He was trying to hold away, but it looked like he held away a little too hard. Yeah. What for the up throw? Uh, that was weird. He went for the up throw up air, and then like the up throw immediately got clanked out or beat out by Shulk's Nair. So even though the fingers are big, they're not disjointed. Mm -hmm. All right, Nico looking to keep spacing here. Going back to the game plan, that's kind of what got on the lead here in the first game. So that's going on so far. Now the name, sorry. You go go for it. Yeah, now the name of the game is Wario is glowing. So, but well, maybe he can't actually just go for up tilt waft. He has to like bait out the shield art first. Exactly. Not only that, does he have to bait out the shield art? He has to bait out Nico for going for a, a poor area or a landing option. And that's just not something. Oh, you, that's that's. Oh that's, my god. Uh, he messed up. He got so scared. He knew like, hold up. He actually didn't go the way I wanted him. That was good. He tried to go for the, the, the pretty much what I'll call the simple purge because it isn't really that available in this game. I definitely would have had a heart attack if I was Nico. I missed a tech right there when he was standing next to me. I should. He's like, I shouldn't be here. He's a good opportunity to toss the bike up to cover that kind of get up option. Good. Good empty hop to go for an up tilt. 
Yeah, uh, throwing bike up on the ledge is just such a scary thing because you oh, know it's going to come down. Mm -hmm. Then it just conditions you to like roll or get up. Oh, he sensed that out. He knew. He knew he was going to go for whack because Kamimi thought he had enough end lag to go for that one. He goes for the upper, kind of scaring Kamimi. That's the one thing that I feel that Nico has practiced a little bit. Uh, having played Kia a few times. No, Wario, he is on the ledge. Kamimi is still not really scared. He knows. That, that oh my god, he should there. be he should be scared. I'm like, bro, you literally like when you when you're too far off the right, that's when Nico just goes for it. He's like, you, you I will do it. Yeah, I will do it, bro. This is my game. Yeah, you're gonna take that first game, especially with how close that was. There was a lot of situations where Kamehameha just like got that jab lock, got went for the waft. The game would have been over, but Kamehameha again, maybe showing some nerves out here. So. It's kind of interesting because I really don't know how many times or how often Kome actually goes to locals, so I can't say that, and I don't even know if they're a part of the same region. That's the thing, so I can't say that Kamehameha is used to this matchup. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that like makes Shulk such a great character. It's matchup and experience, because it's not, it's Shulk requires a lot of finesse and a lot of tech skill to actually like properly use. You can't just go ahead and pick up Shulk and then say I'm on a local. Yeah. It's really hard. And not only that, there's not that many Shulk mains. So it, it could be one of those deals like matchup and experience, plus the character is considered to be widely a top tier. Especially after this last patch. Mm-hmm. So actually looking uh looking a bit better in for game one. Last game we saw Kamehameha like kind of just take a lot of damage and then start to bring it back and as I say that, immediate backslash. Good jump art. He's gonna kind of give him that extra high and he watches himself on the tech roll because he knows if I roll or if I do a get, if I don't get the get up attack on the right opportunity, Kamehameha will tech check me all over the ledge. He will, he will give you that shoulder check. Yeah. Oh, nice. Scouts out the air dodge, but I think he's going to live. He does have the bike. He goes he goes low. That was good. But unfortunately, Kamehameha fell out. Yeah, fall out. Falling out of the up B. Really good for Kamehameha. Oh, doesn't go for the reverse hit. Really smart, because at this point, Kamehameha was going to get back on the stage first. Now, this battle for the first stock is intense. Both players just trying to find it, but... It's always been, too, because you know, like, the first stock really almost dictates momentum, even though you can seal it back. You always want to make sure you have that shock, but that's one thing I'm telling you. Yeah, that get up attack was not not a not a good idea there. Nah man. You you literally guess wrong. And that's one thing that you have to be careful when you fight Shulk, because those get up options, you have to really time them. Not only time them, respect them because they get up, you get up attack and Shulk gives you space, it's key only giving you space so you can go for a forward air or you can go for a tomahawk grab. Mm -hmm. Or a delayed aerial. I just feel like get up attack is like not that great of an option just because like the risk reward is so high in that situation when Shulk is in that smash art. Yeah. That and he could just down tilt you. He can, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he could just <laughs> Shoulder shot Kamehameha looking to keep things up in terms of stocks and not percent. I mean, when you see stocks and percent, sometimes what really matters is more of the momentum. Because even though the stock of uh, the percentage should be against you, momentum is what really matters. As I say that, he immediately starts his classic clap combo. And Nico knows, hold up, I don't want to get killed by that. I don't want to lose any momentum. Right, he's glowing right now. It's a doom counter, man. Oh, he. Oh my god. That was good because you know what? He didn't want to get hit by a tilt. Kamehameha jumped up there, but I think he realized that he wanted Waft on the other side so it would have killed. So he's just trying to reposition himself. Good tech, oh. good. good neutral. Yeah, good neutral tech, but again, Kamehameha with these outer shield Wafts are just not really... They're not They're not working out for him. Because, they're not. Because Shulk is a character who, like, he has a lot of startup, but once it's out and over, like, there's not that much end lag. So yeah. your opportunity to punish has to be off of a pair. That drift was not okay. That, 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 drift, that drift was a life-saving drift. This is really interesting because, like, Kamehameha, from what, I, what I've seen before, he was the type of warrior to, like, only try to go for it as a confirm, not really as a punish. Right. So it's really weird to see him just kind of throw it out of shield when you don't have, like, a clear confirm for it. And I think that's what makes Warrior so scary is that at any point in time, you're like, I have this confirm in a waft instead of as a punish. I'd like to maybe, yeah, I'd like to maybe see him, like, go off stage for an edge go when he's, like, recovering low. I think that'd be a perfect time to and, go for it. And that's when Kamehameha got the stock of last time. He knew he had to make that low recovery. Mm -hmm. Nice. See you again. He sees the cross up there, but unfortunately, Kamehameha's gonna have a great DI to survive. But good opportunity for Kamehameha to see the cross up at the oh, The bike. The oh bike did it to him. Yeah, bro. That's, that's where it hurts the most. You thought you were riding the bike when Nico was on the wheel the whole time. And he, go immediately, he had the arts up, immediately got hit, shield. I don't know what you're gonna do, but you're not gonna do it to me. Yo, man, let me get that extra third stock that you never thought I had. Stouts to get up attack, but the backer barely missed. There. He, I like that option. He kind of conditioned Kamehameha to hold shield to grab. And that still works. Kamehameha kind of a little bit scared. He has a lot of respect for the name. 
And the way that Shields, uh, Nico's playing the playstyle. And Nico still has the stock. It just really seems that Wario, his kill options aren't really that fast. That dash attack does have that bit of startup, and so you can't really get it as a punish out of Shield. Yeah, not only that, the way that Nico's playing, he's playing to make sure he boxes coming me out. Goes for the down air, barely missing. Oh! Jesus. No tech, and Nico takes out Japan. <laughs> With the 2 all. Oh, you see the little fist bump? Yeah, yeah. Yo, let's go, Nico! You see, you see little fist bump? Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Yeah, he's letting him know. Bro. You earned that. You earned that.